This is Vern Bang, recipe slang and muck banging it out. Not a pro or a hoe. We're going to be banging it out in this episode. Chisel and nizzle. Wigtastic, it's magic. Spilling the tea on some of them episodes. It's your boy, Vern Bang. And that's why cooking from my soul is the way I go on this multiple mukbang channel. We'll be back for more episodes. All right, good morning, y'all. This is Vern Bang. And so you can see me right here. We got the pork roast going. So I'm going to show you how to marinate this with the orange mojo, the sour orange mojo seasoning. So anyways, uh, go ahead and move this. I should be able to see. So all I did was kind of crosshatch this top. Just go at an angle that way with your knife and cut into it and then go the opposite way and then you get these little diamonds and then we're going to turn it on this side. Alrighty, so we got our pork roast here and we're going to go ahead and get a little violent with it. So basically we're just going to stab it and we're going to make these and I sharpened this knife really good so it is nice and sharpened. So be careful, don't cut yourself. And we're just going all through it to make these little pockets because we're going to add this. Uh, we've got an array of seasonings, the usual suspects that I have. And then we got, we're going to do those array of seasonings. And then we also got onion, garlic, and ginger. And then we got our oranges. They were they're not sweet. They're very sour. And then I also uh, threw a little apple cider vinegar in there. And so we're going to heat it up. And we're just, like I said, going to make some pockets in here. Oh. All righty. Make another one over here. Another one right there in the middle. And there's no rhyme or reason other than to get this marinade in there quickly. I don't know if you ever seen uh, on how to make a perenin, which is like a Puerto Rican roast. Kind of the same way. So, I got that going. And basically, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get our seasoning on top, so we are going with just flavor seasonings basically, so we're going with our beautiful jerk seasoning. Saturies. Put that Creole blood in me. Love the Tonys. And then we have onion powder. Garlic powder. And I'm basically shaking these over these holes. I'm going to put the seasoning up real quick. And so the reason I did this is because we're going to get this marinade, these onions, and it's got garlic and ginger. Oh, smell it. it. smells fantastic. And a little bit of water. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and kind of play with our food. Kind of 
get all this. We want to push as much of this in those nice crevices that we created. And it's messy, so make sure you put this over something that you're not going to mind. I got it on these plastic trays that I like using. I got several of them. Also use one in my mukbang because it makes cleanup so much easier. Alright. Yeah, so we're just gonna press this in and kind of rub it all over. We're gonna give this a good little massage. We want this flavor. Let me get these in that crevices on this side. That way this seasoning gets all the way through. And don't worry, I'm going to get everything off this board when I stick it on the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and move this board out of the way. Wash my hands up. Hopefully y'all having a beautiful morning. So I got this nice cast iron pan. It is hot out of the oven. And we're going to put this down, put it in my grill pan, it's going to be cooking this grill pan. And you see all that goodness. We're going to make sure we get all that goodness onto here. I like cooking with cast iron because it cooks very evenly. And we're going to roast this in the oven. I will tint it with some foil. And don't worry, we didn't forget about the sour orange mojo. Like I said, these are fresh oranges. They're not very sweet. And then I add about a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So yes, if you have time to let this marinate for 24 hours, do so. We are running out of time, unfortunately, but we're going to go like we are. So we got that in there. Alright, we're going to stick this in the oven, and I'm going to cover this for the first few, few hours and then we'll uncover it later on probably for maybe the first four hours maybe five is probably how long it's going to take to cook because I want to get this nice beautiful flavor in here so anyways so beautiful alright this is Vern Bang this is how to do the orange mojo seasoning the sour orange mojo seasoning the way I do it so hopefully you enjoyed this uh, first part of the recipe. We'll come back after we get it roasted. And then we're on our way. I'm making the tamales, baby. Tamales, tamales. Ooh. Roasted tamales. I mean, tamales with the roasted pork and green chili. With this beautiful mojo sour orange seasoning, baby. Cook it with burn bang. Peace. All right, y'all. So a little recipe update. So I went ahead and added some more seasoning on top because this is a thick piece of meat and you do want the seasoning permeate and the other thing I'm going to do since I didn't let it marinate for 24 hours I would say 24 hours to 48 hours if you can because it would be a lot better but I'm going to be ladling this over and over and over and over as this cooks all day uh, that's why I put so much juice and plus I don't want it to burn on the bottom and then 
we are going to cover with that foil. So, just a little recipe update to keep you in the loop. Yep, 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 yep. And then we're going to hit it with this foil and get it in this oven. And, uh, so anyways, this is Vern Bang with the, uh, roasted pork with the, uh, orange mojo seasoning, baby. Alrighty. All right, y'all, this is Vern, so we're back. So this is the second day. And so right here, you can see we have our pork. And so I'm going to be chopping up our pork. And then you can see right here to the side, we got our mojo sauce and uh, the sour orange mojo sauce that I reserved. And so we're chopping up our pork. And uh, so yes, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and chop this pork up. It came out nice and good. Uh, just keep an eye on your meat. That's one thing, tip I'm going to tell you. Uh, even when you got people cooking around you that you think they'll take your food out of the oven, they won't sometimes. So just make sure you keep an eye on your own food, you know? Because this one got a little crunchy. With my teeth being like there, I can't eat that. But the dogs are going to eat that, so they're going to be all right. And the mojo sauce, you know, didn't make it all the way through the cooking, so I actually remade my mojo sauce. So, like I say, cooking ain't perfect sometimes. Sometimes you fall asleep. Sometimes shit happens, you know. If it gets a little crunchy, it's no big deal. Uh, don't get that discouraged, because... But see this meat? It was so fatty, this pork. There was so much fat still in the pan... Uh, about, you know, about two inches of fat in the bottom of the pan when I pull this out. And this meat is still nice, tender, succulent, so. So anyways, just keep an eye on it and take it out. Uh, this roast usually cooks for like four or five hours. And so anyways, so, we got our reserve mojo sauce. Back on subject. <laughs> we got our reserve mojo sauce. And uh, so we're just chopping this meat up. And these are going to be for the tamales. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And we're not taking all the fat out, you know, because I love pork fat. So we're going to leave some of that nice fatty goodness in. It'll still have some of the crunchies, but... I don't like it's too hard on my teeth to eat all these crunchies. Even though some people like that, you know, that texture. But yeah, look. Ooh. Let's see, it got kind of a little too much. Because, like I said, the the uh, mojo sauce dried out of it. And left it vulnerable in the oven and nobody took it out. So anyways... Yes, y'all. So I'm putting all these crunchy bits to the side. Because my roommate likes it and the dogs eat it as well. So, kind of like burn-ins. A lot of people love burn-ins. Just, not with my teeth like it is. I'm still going through major, major teeth issues. And I try not to show it in my mukbangs, but I'm sure y'all can tell sometimes. Alright. So we can get this meat chopped up. I'm going to get it in this pan and let it uh, cook in this mojo sauce. It's just going to rehydrate a little bit. Get all nice and happy, happy. And, um, and this is what's going to go on our tamales. I'm going to try to make about two dozen tamales. Because we ate some of this pork yesterday too. Uh, but it would be enough to make some tamales with. And um, Yes y'all. It's going to be delicious. So we're making pork tamales. Uh, with the sour orange mojo. Sauce. And then we got. I'm uh, also going to use green chili enchilada sauce as well. That's going to be our sauce that we're going to use. So we're going to have this meat with its sauce. And then we're going to put that in the tamales. 
but then to make sure we have enough sauce and moisture and stuff in there that way our tamales are nice and soft we don't want no hard tamales we want nice and soft and this tamale recipe is going to be very different because it's going to be and you're thinking yeah <laughs> it ain't going to be that healthy but it's going to be on the healthier side meaning i'm using a lard olive oil fat combo ratio so if you're watching your your weight or you just don't want to use you don't like using lard or there's other oils you can use you can use straight vegetable oil you can use uh whatever kind of oil you want olive oil is really nice it's got good flavor and we're steaming this so it's not like we're going to cook it at a high heat temperature so I'm going to use a mixture of olive, a mixture of lard, and some bacon fat, baby. Some more lard. So yes, y'all. And they're going to be just as good and tasty. And we're going to use hot water instead of chicken stock because I'm out of bouillon cubes. And uh, that's something different because I usually have chicken stock on hand. But I don't. And we don't get our money till the third, baby. So, we just living life on a budget, baby. Living life on a budget. Yes, oh. All right, y'all. So you can see all that pork we got stacked up. It's gonna be a good amount of pork. We're gonna let that reheat up. And uh, so yeah, I think y'all seen enough. So once this heats up and gets rice and ready, we're gonna switch over here to the masa. Do the masa. And I'll be back with more of this uh, homemade uh, orange mojo roasted pork with green uh, enchilada sauce. So, yes, y'all. You know how I like to mix it up, baby? We'll, we'll, we'll nail down a name for it. Or just call them green pork enchiladas. With the sour orange mojo, baby. There we go. Alright, y'all. Alright, y'all. This is Vern. We're back. So, we're going to do the masa part. So, we got... Right here, we got our measuring cup. And... It's got a top side measure. Let's see. If we can get it in the camera. You see right there, it's four cups. It's filled all the way up. Four cups right there. So yes, y'all, uh, we're going to put four cups of the Maseca flour in here. I'm trying to get y'all a better, more nailed down, precise recipe. So we got that. And then we're going to go, we're going to start putting some of these sauces we're going to use, some of the liquid, and our seasonings as well. So we got our hatch pepper sauce. I used basically a half a can. I don't know if you can, yeah. So anyways, I used a half a can of this in the uh, sour orange mojo pork, and then we're going to use the other half a can, and like I said, that's just the green, the hatch, green chili enchilada sauce, the pre-made. I would be using chicken stock or whatever, but I'm out, so, and like I said, I don't get paid till the third. And so anyways, we're going to put some and it says on here to put uh, one teaspoon. So yeah, I may have did a little more, but I mean, that's just uh, baking powder, y'all. Make it nice and fluffy. Alright, so we're going to use our seasonings that we season the meat with as well. So, we're going to add our Creole seasoning. Because I got that cream, that Cajun blood in me. And plus I like it. We got our garlic. So, Tony Satry's. Tony's Burger. Alright. Garlic, 
And then we're going to hit it with our onion powder. And you put as much as you like. But you know, over here, resident members of Flavor Town, we like it flavorful. We want it seasoned. And you have to season every layer. When you, no matter if you're frying chicken, you're making tamales, no matter what you're making, every layer that you got, you got to season it if you want it to have flavor. So, that's one of my big things that I say all the time. This is Cavender's All Purpose Greek Seasoning. That's one thing that I do say all the time when I cook. You're going to hear me say it all the time when I cook. Because there's constantly new people always coming in checking these videos out. So I want to just reiterate it. Not meaning to sound like a broken record. but And then of course we got our Yaman. Our Carjo's Este Spice. Jerk seasoning baby. Let's see if we can fold it and get it better. Yep, Carjo's. Jamaican jerk. This is, the, this is the best Jamaican jerk seasoning. Came straight from Jamaica, look. Right there. Product of Jamaica. And I love this because it's got a lot of different seasonings. It's got salt, crisp chili, sugar cane, pimentin, which is all spice. Black pepper, granulated garlic, coriander, thyme, thyme, garlic extract, and cinnamon. That's how I get that flavor on the Jamaican jerk chicken, baby. So we're going to go ahead and give this a mixy, a mixy mix loo. Yeah, I know you're not going to see much. You're just going to see the, the top of this pretty mixer right now. But I'm going to kick it back up and show you tell, show you what it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and lock it in place. And I may move this around. Let's see. There we go. You can see a better view of it now. Alright. Now you can see what I'm doing. So this is my oil blend. It's a mixture of lard, olive oil. Uh, bacon fat. It's a mixture of goodness. That's what I'm going to say right there. A mixture of goodness. Now you roughly need about one pound. I'm going to see what it says on the back of the bag because we're kind of going by the back of the bag. So I can give y'all a general, a more nailed down recipe. That way y'all can recreate this at the house. But y'all can always shake it up like I do and eyeball it. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. It's just I've been cooking for years and that's how I learned how to cook over the years. Just by doing it and sight and taste and, you know. I can smell when the stuff's going to get done as long as I'm on top of it and not falling asleep, if you know what I mean. And so we got a little more residual. I'm going to put a little water in this can to get the rest of my, uh, to get the rest of my, uh, green sauce out. Because, you know, over here we're not going to waste nothing. So I'm going to add a little bit, just H2O in a pot that's been heated, a little H2O, and don't worry, we're going to add more H2O. And I'm going to look at the back of the bag right now. Sorry I'm not more organized, but we doing this on a whim, baby. I'm running behind on this recipe, sorry y'all, it's probably maybe hit a little late, may hit tomorrow. On the second instead of the first, I apologize. Uh, so on the back of the bag, uh, do, 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 do. 
It says a half a cup on the back of the bag. Uh, canola oil, but we're not using up just straight up canola oil. And, uh, which would equal half a cup. would be about four ounces but a lot of people they use like uh, more oil I can kind of I, I, I know how to eyeball it let's put it that way so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna eyeball it Which I put a good amount of oil in there and see we just got this is just regular I know you can't see because the way I got this set up but this is just extra virgin olive oil the so straight up real deal thing and add a little bit more oil so this rice should be should be a little healthier because we're using olive oil and not so much lard, so anyways. Now right now, and I went with four cups, it says three and a half on the bag, but you know me, I don't go exact. Y'all can do it exact if y'all want to, but I'm gonna go how I row. So, we're gonna scrape these sides down. We're gonna scrape it down. Scrape it down. And you see how this is? It's real stiff. It's not gonna stay like that. We don't want it like that. We want it nice. And it's soft. But we want it a more pliable. We want it pliable. We want those luscious, very soft tamales. We don't want those brickies, the bricolas. We don't want nothing that we're going to chip a tooth out on, you know what I mean? We want those luscious tamales. Everybody thinks tamales are hard, but they're pretty easy. So I added a little more oil. So we're not going to add any more oil. I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. Don't forget to lock it. Then, so instead of keep adding water, we're going to add some more flavor. So, these sauces that aren't too hot, <laughs> we got our serrano here. It's going to give us our red, fiery look and that good flavor. And don't worry, it's not hot. We want to get all this sauce out. So we're going to go ahead and stop it. We're going to open her up. And then we're going to mix it. We're gonna scrape it down and see what the consistency of the texture is. And then also scrape the bottom too. See the bottom? Look. The bottom still got powder on it. Look at that. So yeah, scrape your bottom as well because these attachments don't always reach the bottom like they should. Okay, and you see still how stiff it is? We want it more pliable, baby.
So it needs more water or stock. So we lock it up. And we're just eyeballing it at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and change the attachment because, like I said, we want, because we were started with the dough, like, but this is going to be more like a batter because we got to have this baby spreadable. We want a nice soft tamales. So we're going to go ahead and put the paddle on. So we switch to our paddle attachment. I'm gonna lock it. Now that's gonna mix this more better. And we get more of an even mix. It's gonna mix evenly on the bottom. So right now I'm gonna see what that texture is. And we're gonna add more liquid. Now you can see it's starting to look a little different, like a more like a batter, like a real thick batter. That's what we're going for. We need like a real thick batter type consistency. That's a good way to explain it. And this masa, you can eat, taste a little bit raw. It ain't gonna hurt you just a little bit. Um, and I use warm water. Use warm water. Uh, straight out of the faucet. You can use bottled water. Heat it up on your stove. But use warm water. Alright, so now we're going to look at the... And always save a little extra of the maseca. Because if you do, go get it a little too soft. Uh, you can always add more powder. I mean, this recipe is very forgiving. But you see that texture? How it's going to spread very easily. And you see how it's not sticking to my hand. See how it's not sticking to my hand. And it's just, it's like buttery. And see how it spreads. That means I got enough oil. And it's just me doing this for years. I know I got enough oil because it's not sticking. And I know it's going to spread evenly. To see how it's spreading out like that that's where you want it because we're going to put our meat basically imagine this being a little tamale you put your meat and this is in a husk and it's going to you know fold up like that and it's going to steam and then you have many tamale so yes we're there that's how we tell we're going to mix it make sure it's well incorporated and this is going to sit for 30 minutes and we'll recheck the consistency, but I think we nailed it. So, uh, this is, you go ahead and pull this up so you can see it better. See it? Nice, nice, nice consistency. So this is basically the way I do my recipe. You do your recipe differently, that's fine. I'm just showing you how I do mine. And uh, everybody does stuff different. This is just kind of how I've done it over the years. And like I said, you can taste a little bit. Good. It's got flavor. It's not hot. It's not going to kick you out. But it's got good flavor. So that means whatever you're going to put. So if your masa's flavorful, your meat's flavorful. Every layer is seasoned, so the whole, when it comes together as one, it's all going to be like money. It's going to be like pow, like that pow flavor. So anyways, this is Burn Bang. We got our tamale um, uh, masa done. Uh, and I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to move this out of the way. 
take this paddle attachment off and I'm gonna grab this meat and show you this meat real here real quick So here's our meat. Bring it up a little closer. See how nice and steamy it is. And I'll go ahead and pull one up. Yeah, see? I'm just gonna. Yeah, see how. Oh, it's just butter. Butter. Mmm. And you got that sour orange mojo flavor. You got your couple of crusties to get that roasted flavor even though this is done in the oven the meat is soft it's saucy we got our green enchilada sauce in there so this is going to go inside of our tamales so basically we're going to go the next step the moss is going to set for 30 minutes i'm going to let this meat cool down and uh Our next step is going to put the tamales together. So anyways, let's slide this back over here. Give you all another look at this beautiful, beautiful masa. So I'm going to cover this up. It's going to sit 30 minutes. And uh, then we'll start putting, uh, I got to soak the, uh, the corn husk. We're using corn husk. I got to soak those for 30 minutes as well. So it works out perfect. And then we're going to put it together and then we'll steam the tamales for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So, anyways, this is Cooking with Vern, my uh, healthier version of my tamale recipe. But you're not going to be missing the flavor. Alrighty, y'all. This is Cooking with Vern Bang. So, this is Vern Bang. We're back. So, we got our corn husk here. It's been soaking for 30 minutes to an hour. And so, we got our masa that we made earlier. That I showed you on the video. So basically, I just got something that I'm working on uh, a food safe tray, and then we got uh, a paper towel because we got these, uh, we rehydrated these in water so they're a little wet. So put the paper towel to kind of absorb some of the moisture, that way you don't got too much moisture on your working area. And then we're gonna spread this masa out and see how nice and easy it spreads out. Yes, y'all. And you just want a thin layer. We're making these soft, luscious um, tamales. We're not making those big, thick ones with, you know, the heavy bricks that you can barely eat. And then it takes you six months to digest it. We're not making those. We're making these nice, soft ones. These beautiful ones. So, so we got that thin layer. And we got our beautiful meat here. Look how that meat came out. Oh, and that beautiful mojo sauce with that green enchilada sauce in there as well. We're gonna put some filling in there. Don't be shy on the filling. All right. Yeah, and then from there, we just you go one way and go the other way. And then I just kind of bow the end like that. And there we go. We got one giant tamale. So if you got foil, it's good to wrap these in foil ahead of time. That way they stay all in their nice little uniform pack. So basically, and you want to make sure you, you're you going to stack them in the steamer. Once you get ready to steam them, you're going to stack them straight up. And you see the hole on top. That's going to be sticking straight up. So you want them like that. And you want them tightly packed in the steamer. Because I'm not going to show you that process. So basically, that's how you do a tamale. I'm going to do one more for y'all. And then that will conclude our tamale video.
All right, yeah. So we got another corn husk. I'm just gonna damp it off. Then we're gonna spread that masa out very thinly. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. You just get it spread on there in the thinnest layer you can. But you know, you want to, got to have a layer on there. But you ain't got to have a mountain on there either. Alrighty, so we get some more of this luscious pork. Put down there. Then we'll fold it once to your left or right or right to your left, doesn't matter, however you want to do it. And then fold that little tail end up and there we go. Alright y'all, peace, this is Cooking with Vern Bang. This is how I make a lower fat tamale, you know, we use a little olive oil to cut some of that large fat off. So peace, stay trail, and we'll see you in the mukbang. Alright y'all.